Okay, good afternoon. Welcome to uh, your weekly take on the market. Today is Friday, August 23rd. It's uh, about three o'clock Pacific time. Uh, obviously, market is closed. Uh, this is your weekly take on the market. I can't recall if I said that or, or not. Um, I will be your host. My name is Scott St. Clair, manager of the premium product group here, Investors Business Daily. Uh, disclaimer, I'm not licensed. I can't tell you what to buy, what to sell, what to hold. How many stocks you should buy, uh, what, what your portfolio allocation should be. Uh, I could go on and on. So please take a moment to read the disclaimer. Okay. All right. So we'll do overall market thoughts. We'll do stocks to watch. We'll do the quote of the week. We'll do uh, we'll follow the same routine till I think of a better routine. Uh, creature habit. We'll keep it that way. So I think we're in a, an uptrend, a bull market, a rally, whatever you want to call it. It's fine. Uh, and um, it's unfortunately, it's becoming more obvious that that's the case how fast uh, the market snapped back. So sentiment uh, is a, is gotten a little bullish pretty fast. But sentiment on the bull side is not a reason to get out sentiment on the bear side would be a reason to cover your shorts or uh, maybe consider going long if you like to buy that way, but it just doesn't work as well the other way. So I'd prefer uh, people to be a little bit more skeptical of the rally, but um, we'll see. That's fine. As it's, if it starts to go up and up, maybe this, if this number dissipates, that would be ideal, but there's so many sentiment indicators I just don't use them quite as much as I used to. There's investors intelligence. There's the NAAIM or something, National Association Investment Managers. I, I don't know um, who they're um, using for that. There's the CNN greed and fear. So you can put it all together. Uh, they work They work pretty well or, or better than pretty well, very well uh, to the downside, not as well to spotting tops. So um there's that. I think that's it as far as um, as slides go. Let's go ahead and just jump right into the indexes. So today, I guess we got the, uh, I don't know if Jerome Powell talked. I don't, it's funny. I don't, I know enough to be dangerous, but I don't follow all of that because I don't really want to be influenced by it. So I, I don't know what he said, when he said, I have, you know, I see a little bit on my Twitter feed, the headlines, stuff like that. That's about the gist of it. I knew when it hit because the market rallied and then the market sold off, which is typical by the news um, or by the rumor, sell the news, but then the market came back. So it didn't stay down. Um, so it was a pretty good day considering up one and a half percent. And I, I think the market is acting just fine. I mean, in a perfect world, it would just sit right here and then it's probably do that. I, I don't know if it's going to do that, but uh, it, that would be kind of what would happen in a, in a perfect world. Uh, let me turn off my camera just in case. So like something like that. Uh, it's kind of a, uh, um, you know, an unorthodox double bottom, something like that on the NASDAQ. I, I think the NASDAQ, look, the NASDAQ is going to go up if the S&P goes up. It, it is what it is. It almost has to. But I don't think it's going to have the same oomph as far as leadership as as the S and P and or other indexes, or individual stocks. Could be that the indexes just do nothing and individual stocks kind of march to their own drum. So let's go to the S and P. So the S and P kind of got the same orthodox, but it's above this area and it's practically a new high. I'm I'm. Well, look, I'm not certain of anything, but I, I, I expect the market to, to make new highs. Um, after that, all bets are off. I, I really think it's going to make new highs and then run. And then who knows? That, and, and if it were to, I think I've talked about it before, if it were to make new highs, do something like this, unfortunately, that would make me very bearish. Um, let's hope it doesn't do that. And that could be weeks to months away. So I don't have to worry about it right now. But at this very moment, I think you want to be long stocks. If you're not comfortable, you're 30% long, 40% long, 80% uh, long. You don't have to be uh, pedal to the metal, but you, I think you want to be long stocks. That's that's my 
uh, two cents. And that's, you know, I, I, one of the great perks of working here and I've mentioned it a hundred times is, you know, we, we eat our own cooking. We practice what we preach. Uh, I'm in there right with you. Uh, uh, I'm all in on the process. So I've, I've, you know, I'm pretty long uh, across all my accounts. Uh, let's look at the Dow just for, uh, you know, what and giggles. Well, really a weird pattern, but you know, another, a pretty good day. The Russell, let's see what that, Wow, really good day, up 3%. So this is what I'm, I think, is this is actually kind of confirming my thesis that these other areas of the market are going to do better than the NASDAQ. Um, so the NASDAQ was up 1.5%, 1.47. The S&P was up 1.15. That's usually typical. The Dow was up 1.14, tiny bit atypical you probably would rather see the s p up a little bit more than the dow and then the russell was up uh twice the nasdaq um which is you know which is kind of a risk on metric i think because more than i think today on ivy live we talked about the um the russell and that more than half of the companies in the russell uh, don't make money. They rely on funding, i.e. borrowing, i.e. lower interest rates to stay alive, for lack of a better term. So uh, this is, if we're in a lower interest rate environment, based on what Jerome Powell said, then these companies should do better. Um, what else is out there as far as the indexes? Uh, Bitcoin. Ah, Bitcoin had a pretty good day. I don't know. I, I've said it before. I don't know what to make of Bitcoin. I'm, I just don't. I just think maybe it's just going to be like something I'm just not participating in. Uh, gold. So gold's acting really well. It's not running away and hiding. But if you're long gold, you can't be upset about it. Uh, silver, would, which would be more uh, speculative. I think this is the both these two days are kind of like a. Uh, a shakeout plus three days at where you could you could buy silver if you were interested. So that looks interesting to me. I, I don't, I'm not long it, but I, I wouldn't fault anyone for wanting to be long uh, silver. Uh, so we're in this period where we're waiting on what the Fed's going to do. And I think the market goes up until the very first Fed cut. And then on the first Fed cut, um, I don't know. I really don't know. I, I, it it doesn't. It seems too obvious that that would be the top, and and uh, so that it's just not. I can't can't think that that's the case. So maybe it can go for a little bit longer. But um, I'm hoping we get some kind of really powerful rally, and that you get some really strong offensive sell signals that I can sell into. That would be ideal for me. Uh, all right, let's go to the industry groups. Industry group rank, oh, I want this one. Current. Steel specialty alloys, number one. Uh, medical long-term care, oil and gas royalty. Beverages, not not alcoholic. Gold still holding up. Telecom infrastructure. Media, newspapers, insurance. So... Kind of a very eclectic group, medical hospitals, tobacco, food, meat products, not exactly screaming bull market in the industry groups. I don't know what to make of those, of that. Uh, I, I, there's two kinds of approaches, like the bottoms up and the uh, top down, right? So top down is, you know, I guess the the world economy, the local economy, the indexes. Uh, the industry groups, the best stock in the industry group, right? That would be like top down, give or take. Bottoms up would be the best stock in the industry group and go work your way up the food chain. I prefer that way. So I'd rather just try to find the best companies. And because um, the other, I think it's a little, it's not easy, but it's a little bit easier than determining like what the world economy is going to do. So when I focus on just, hey, are these are there stocks to buy? Are these stocks acting good? Is there stuff that I want to own? Uh, 
I tend to do a lot better. So I'm always trying to focus in that regard. Uh, okay, so let's go to the stocks and let's so let's start with Kava in case I were to forget because that would bother me. So Kava is the leader in in this new rally at this very moment, uh, stronger than Nvidia, smaller of course, but this kind of action, you know, seventy two to one twenty in, in a number of days. So if, if this is a real rally, a long-term rally, this stock could, could is probably just beginning its move and maybe you want to find a way to get into it. Uh, the reason I want to talk about this one is this term extended. Uh, I've been hearing, you know, you don't want to buy stocks that are extended. And that's true, but I, I think what's going on a lot is that the word extended is often misinterpreted. Like if it's not a perfect buy point, it's therefore extended. And I don't think that is the case. So if you're waiting for some type of buy point, it just wouldn't, it's just too strong. It just wouldn't build a cup, wouldn't build a handle. You just had to kind of hold your nose and buy it. And, and I can tell you, there's three or four times during the day here, 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 that I had my order ready to just buy Kava and just buy it and just start a position I just couldn't seem to pull the trigger because it was quote unquote extended. And so I'm on the outside looking in and um, that I think that's, that's just just an air ball for me. I should not have allowed that to because I, I don't like to do that. I, 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 if it's extended, that's how strong the stock is acting. Now I'll, I'll buy the, the right position size, try to find a place to, to add to it. And if I have to stop myself out, I just stop myself out. But uh, I'd rather do that. Like, I think one of the great things that Bill did really well, I, I think that people, you know, from listening to in-house is he is what what is always identifying the best companies and and in combination with the best stocks, ideally, and probing them, probing them, trying to find a, a way to get a position. And he was willing to lose. It didn't matter. Lose, 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 make a fortune in XYZ. So I really dropped the ball on Kava and, and this one. Now, I'd have had to hold into earnings, but I tend to almost always hold into earnings. What's the risk? You have to do the math. Let's say I have a 5% position in Kava. Like people are so worried about earnings and rightfully so. Earnings is kind of a wild card. I get it. But if you have a 5% position in Kava, and it gaps down 10%, that's the over, your whole portfolio is down 0.5%. So let's just say you're up 19.5% for the year. If you own Kava and it gaps down, you're gonna be up 19% for the year. Can you, can you stomach that? You stop focusing on, oh, I don't wanna lose in Kava. Focus on, boy, if I get Kava right, I might make 35% in it. So I want to add and add and add to it or be there with a with some type of position. So position size is so important. You want to have more of the ones that are working, less of the ones that aren't. And you don't have to be right all that often. And, you, and being wrong is just a cost of doing business. You got to kind of get used to that. So um, this one was, you know, like I said, I fumbled the ball in this one. This is an error. A uh, couple, couple, I mean, ideally, I've got this little tail here. I've got, you know, really strong day through the 50 day. I've got all the trappings of uh, chances to buy it. I, I, I use the product. I've been there a number of times. It's always a line. I like the food. I, you know, when in doubt, I go to Kava for, for lunch or on my way home from the gym. And so it's just all right there for me. And, and I just kind of missed it. So, um, but if it's going to be the next Chipotle or the next McDonald's or whatever, I, I don't know. It's, it could go a long way. You know, it's just kind of just got gotten started in its, in its life cycle. There's 309 restaurants across 24 States, according to this, uh, across the top. Uh, if that's, could they have 900, uh, restaurants across, uh, 50 States, 49 States or 48 States. Why not? Why couldn't they? So it's it it it's uh so the main thing here is this is the leading stock. You don't, if you own it, congrats. If you don't own it, it, should be on your watch list. It's up there with the leaders of the Nvidia's of the world.
All right, so let's go to NVIDIA. And again, very unorthodox double bottom, but to me, it's kind of double bottom-ish. You've got the earnings in a few days. Let's see how that plays out. I think if you own NVIDIA, you just wait. If you don't own it, you probably just wait, I think, at this point, if you didn't buy uh, buy it already. Um, Palantir. Hanging in there, not doing anything wrong. Not not jamming, but not doing anything wrong. Uh, Shack, Shake Shack. Hanging in there, not doing anything wrong. Uh, what else is there? Oh, Shark Ninja. Again, kind of a, a, a broken record. Hanging in there, not doing anything wrong. Um, I got off track. Let's go back to the uh, the 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 big boys. Meta, acting just fine. Not do, you know, acting really well considering Amazon. Not all that exciting. I, I think Amazon would be a void and an avoid. Google, same thing, an avoid. Uh, Tesla, I think it's an avoid, but I'm a little bit biased against it. So take that into account. Uh, I'm not short at though. I don't have any desire to be short right here. Any stocks or you know, or anything at this very moment. Um, what else is out there that uh, that's oh Apple of course forgot about that one. So I, I think this could end up being some kind of uh, shakeout on on the overall market, and I've probably told this story before, but if we go back to this reminds me a little bit of 1998. And so we, we bad break in the market, try to rally, really bad break. And then the just the relentlessness of the up move um, here. So somewhere along the line, I think this was a follow today. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, right there. 10, 15 was, if you don't call it, count the pink rally day, it's a, this is day five follow through day. It doesn't matter. Either way, it's a, that's a follow through day. NASDAQ up four and a half percent. At that moment, I, you know, it's been a long time, but I can kind of remember that I was bearish. I thought we were in a bear market. And so I, I didn't believe this move. And then the market's just kind of up another 1.67%. And watch kind of how relentless the market is. Oh, okay. It's, it's, we got a little hammer. It's going to reverse, going to go lower. And it did for half a minute. And, it's just relentless and relentless. And just, I just remember being on the outside looking in every day, just kind of hoping the market would, would come back. It's extended. There's that word, right? The market's extended. It has to, it has to shake out. It has to come back. You've heard all that before. And it doesn't have to do anything. It can go straight up. It can go straight down. The market can do anything it wants. And I, I think it was around, if this is kind of like a five day base or something, watch. Uh, I don't think that's real. I apologize. I think that's a bad tick. I don't remember that day. This is a bad tick. Let's pull up the QQQs that day, 1118. I think that was the day I finally relented relented, and just went long. Um, let's pull up the S&P. Sorry, I got off track here a little bit. I, I, I'm not. I'm almost certain that's a bad tick. Let's go to S and P. I need to see if we can fix that. Yeah, it's a bad tick. Uh, it what never. But it, I remember this was the day when it, I thought. I thought, well, it's just it just can't pull back. And I finally got long, and and just started buying stocks. And it's like it's, this market's not going down. The bear market's over. And it just took me a lot longer than it should have. But you can see kind of how. Relentless to the upside, it was. And everyone that's down here like me and, oh, it's a bear market and <laughs> it's got to pull back, right? It's going to come back and touch the 50 day. It's got to pull back to the, uh, what's that? Oh, what the moving average is the, uh, the purple one. I think it's the, uh, the 21 day. And it's just, just relentless. You had one day of it doing that. So the moral of the story is 
Uh, if you catch yourself saying, yeah, I don't want to buy it, it's extended. You might be right. It might be extended, but that doesn't mean it has to pull back. There's a difference. There's a big difference between extended and, ha and, and it's going to pull back. So I think we're, I don't know if it's going to be this strong because the market was less mature back then. I think the market's a lot more mature now, but I just think we're probably in something like this, kind of a, a relentless push to the upside bear market uh, with, with a lack of belief in it um, until otherwise noted. Um, okay, so what else is out there uh, as far as, you know, names, I, I think coherent it has potential. I, I like this name. I talked about it last time. I do have a position in this one. Uh, VST, uh, not, and it's building this double bottom. You can wait for the pivot. I haven't. I'm long this one as well. These are these are my two biggest positions, coherent and VST. And um, I just think if uh, the 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 AI thing is real, the data the data centers. Are going to need so much energy, so much uh, infrastructure um, that I like these areas. So to me, the asymmetry is way in my favor. If I'm right, I could you know make 35, 40 percent. If I'm wrong, I'm going to lose three, four, five percent, something like that. And I just like to do that over and over uh, if I can. Um, CEG is kind of in that infrastructure play. Not I like VST better, uh, partly because of the sponsorship. Although CEG has good sponsorship too. It's got Contrafund in there. But the pattern isn't as, as good. Um, and then kind of on the, I don't know if I talked about this one, but this, uh, maybe I talked about it on, on uh, IBD Live, but it looks a little bit Netflix-ish from 2010, I believe. The pattern, like that, that power off the lows. And it is building this handle, which is perfect. So this is going to end up being a cup with handle. It's a cup with handle on the daily. Um, Argentinian bank. You know, Scott, I would never buy an Argentinian bank. No problem. Move on. If there's plenty of merchandise, I think the main thing is there seems to be a lot of potential merchandise. If you just need to own 8, 10, 12, 14 stocks, like I'm looking to own. I, you know, and I'm more on the low end of, of the, that number, 8. 8, 10, something like that. Uh, okay. Let's jump into um, the uh, quote of the week. Uh, Jason Shapiro, he was on, uh, he's been on IBD podcast a bunch of times and he's, he's, he's everywhere. So this is, he's easy to find. He was in the book unknown market wizards uh which i actually liked i like that book I re i've read that two or three times the first time i read it i i thought oh, some were some of the chapters were just okay some were good but then i read it again and i actually liked it better the second time so if, if that's worth anything if you've read it and we're like eh, it's okay uh so um I don't predict markets any better than anybody else. If I'm a market wizard, what I feel I'm better at than the vast majority of people is taking losses. I love this quote. It's such a really good quote. Uh, it, you just have to get comfortable as best you can with taking losses. Uh, it's not it's not fun, but you have to just kind of know that it's there. And one of the things that I do to help me take losses is, is, is by sometimes starting with a, if with a small position. So if I start with a small position, it's real easy to, to take a loss. If I just buy a couple hundred shares of Kava just to start my position and, you know, I'm like, Oh, it's extended. As soon as I buy it, it's going to break two points. Right. You think that we all think that, okay, I'll just buy 200 shares. If it breaks two points, I'll be down $400 and I'll move on. And, but, Maybe it doesn't break two points and then maybe it goes up a dollar and then I buy another 200 and then it goes up another dollar. Then I buy another 300 or something like that, like the Darvis way of adding. Um, and then, then if it broke $3, I, I would be down like a dollar and I'd be okay. And then maybe I have 700 shares and I'd lose a dollar and it'd be, that'd be kind of within the realm of, of, in, of being okay. So taking losses, if it's, if it's a small loss, it, it can be a lot easier. So your initial position, 
my, uh, I know Bill is like a 50, 30, 20 approach. Uh, I have to admit, I kind of like the Nicholas Darvis approach. So let's, if I want a thousand shares, I might buy 200, 200, 300. How many do I have now? I have 700, 300, or I might buy 300, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100. I've done that before many times. I I think I've bought this VST in the last handful of days, a dozen times. Just keep, you know, just keep adding to it. Just keep adding to it, trying to build it into the, the max position that I'm willing to accept. Um, so uh, it's, e it's easier. It's not easy, but it's easier to take the loss when, when it's small. I think it was Van Tharp who had a great quote about if it, you know, once the loss becomes too big psychologically that you can't take it. And then it, eventually the loss becomes so big that you have to take it. Right. Let's say you, you, you're you down two grand on X, Y, Z, and you're just like, Oh, I can't lose. I, I, I can't lose two grand. And then you're just like, well, then, then you're down three grand and then you're down five grand. Pretty soon you're down nine grand. It's just like, now the loss is so great. You just can't take it anymore. And you take the loss. Uh, so it's better to just take the small loss. Uh, I think Van Tharp has a great quote about that. Maybe I'll find that for next week because I, I like his thought process on that. So anyways, all right, have a great weekend. Next week, I think I'm off duty on this video because we'll have Arnie and uh, Harold do Stay in Step on Thursday. Uh, and then we'll be back with you uh, the following week. 800-831-2525, marketsurge at investors.com. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you.